A stroke is the appearance of a pen or pencil curve or the outline of a shape. You can set the stroke properties using the stroke panel. I'll hide some of this composition and zoom into the compass. I'll select the ellipse tool and create a shape in the middle of the compass. By default, it has a grey fill and no stroke, although if we look on the colour panel, the stroke colour is set to black. I'll just select the fill and remove it, and then open the stroke panel. Currently, the style is set to no line style. I could change this to a solid line style, or to save time, I could just increase the stroke width below, and the style automatically changes when I release the mouse button. Now we can see the stroke. I could go back to the colour panel and change the stroke colour using the colour wheel, but for this composition I'll keep it black. We also have a dashed line style. I'll select the inner circle and apply the dashed line style. The dashed line options at the bottom of the stroke panel allow us to set the length of each dash and the space in between. The values above the light grey line represent the dashes and the dark grey lines represent the gaps. As well as acting as a visual reference, you can actually click drag left or right on the light or dark areas to increase or decrease the values. Alternatively, you can input the values manually. For instance, I might want the dashes to be 5 points and the gaps in between to be 3. I'll press enter to commit the new values. If I only fill out the first two values in the dashed line options, the pattern will repeat the first two numbers. If I have the round end cap selected, I can create dotted lines by changing the dash length to 0. Now there is no dash length. So the round cap at the start is immediately followed by the round cap at the end, making little circles. We can determine how the dashes sit on the curve or shape by altering the phase value to neaten them up. It may not make much of a difference on a circle, but if I add a dashed stroke to this triangle, with dashes and gaps of 2, and disable balanced dashed lines, we can see that sometimes the dashes are in the corners, and sometimes it's the gaps. We can manually offset the starting point of the pattern by increasing or decreasing the phase value, effectively nudging the pattern along the line. Alternatively, I could enable balanced dashed lines. This feature overwrites the specific line measurements, instead spacing the dashes and gaps evenly, placing dashes symmetrically into the corners and ensuring that there are no partial dashes or gaps at the end of the line. We can also create dash sequences by adding values to the other four fields. I'll select this curve and change the style to dashed lines. Then I'll select a dash pattern of 15, 5, 5, 5, 30 and 5 to create a dash sequence and then disable balanced dashed lines. If I change one of the line values to 0, it will create a dot, as we saw before allowing you to create patterns with dots and dashes. Instead of inputting this value for every stroke, you can copy the stroke settings using the Style Picker tool. On the Context toolbar, I have a checklist of attributes that I can copy. In this case, I only want to copy the stroke attributes, so I'll click None to clear the selection and then select Stroke. Now I can click the curve to load the Style Picker and click any other curve to apply the same stroke attributes. To unload the style picker, I can click in an empty space and then load the stroke attributes of a different curve. Also on the stroke panel, I can change the line's end cap. If I select the compass needle, I can choose to change the ends of the line to round, butt or square. Or we could choose to add an arrowhead at the start or end of the line. As I hover over the options in the list, I can see a preview of how the different arrowheads will look and then select one to apply it. The size of the arrowhead will be determined by the stroke width. However, you can change the percentage value to increase or decrease the size manually. You can also decide whether the arrowhead begins after the curve or finishes at the end of the curve using the two buttons to the right of the percentage field, which in this case makes a big difference. The direction the curve was drawn determines the start and end points. But if, like me, you rotate and flip your curves while you work, you can swap the start or end arrows below, and you can clear the arrowheads with this button next to it. You might want to add a taper to your stroke. You can do this by changing the pressure profile. 
The start and end nodes are linked by default, but you can click the node again to unlink it. You can also click along the pressure profile to create new nodes, or select them and press delete to remove them. I'll use the style picker tool again to copy the pressure profile to the other needle points. Now I'll make the other elements of the composition visible and take a closer look at these triangles to explore some other stroke options. When the shapes are created, they have a round type of join, meaning the corners are rounded. We can change the join type on the stroke panel to bevel or flat join or a mitre join. The mitre setting dynamically controls if beveling occurs. If I wanted a pointed corner like the triangle to the left, I can manually increase the mitre value until the corners become sharp. Below join, we can set the align type. Currently, the stroke is centered on the outline of the shape. We could choose to control the space that the shape takes up by having the stroke stay inside the outline. Or we might want to open up the inside of a shape by moving the stroke to the outside of the outline, particularly if we have an image inside the shape that we don't want to risk covering. Finally, we can use the appearance panel to add more than one stroke to an object. I'll select this mountain triangle and open the appearance panel. At the moment, there is one black stroke. At the bottom of the panel, I can choose to add another stroke. I'll set the new stroke to 4. Select the mitre join and increase the mitre value. And I'll also choose for this stroke to sit inside the outline. Then I'll click on the stroke colour and change it to white on the colour wheel. The appearance panel operates in the same way as the layers panel, so higher strokes will sit over lower strokes. Because of this, I can click drag to move the white stroke down below the black stroke. Next, I'll add a third one. This one, I'll set the width to 3. And again, give it a mitre join and set the stroke to sit inside the outline. However, for this stroke, I'll click the normal blend mode to access the list of blend modes and change it to an erase blend mode. This is a great way to create an offset stroke effect. So that was a look at using the stroke panel and creating arrowheads and multi-stroke effects. We also looked at how you can copy your stroke settings to other curves and shapes using the style picker tool. Thanks for watching.